Welcome to It's Happening in Grand Prairie. I'm Georgia Clemson, and we have a great show for you today, a special edition starring our former city manager, <laughs> Tom Hart, and our most excellent mayor, Ron Jensen. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Good morning, Thank Georgia. You. Oh, it's great to see y'all and to have you here. We know um, that something's going on at, at the city hall but it's going on today without Tom Hart being there because you could be here today. That's correct. <laughs> Mayor, give us a little background on where we are and why we're here today. Well, after over 40 years of being a city manager and over 20 years of being the city manager here in Grand Prairie, Tom has decided to retire. It's very fitting. He's in his it's good age. Uh, he, we, we've got capable people, something he's been planning for, for years and has groomed someone to take his place as Steve Dye. So it's good timing for him and his wife Susan and, and that's the main thing. It's good timing for him and it works out really well with our city because he knew it wasn't something that just happened overnight. He's been planning on this, has a succession plan set up and I couldn't be more happy for him and his wife Susan. Yes, it is wonderful. We are very happy for you and your family because you'll be able to spend more time with them. Now, we find ourselves today closing the door on one era and opening a door to a new. But let's talk about that past era and some of the things that were accomplished during the time that you were city manager. And if you could just give us briefly how you came to the city of Grand Prairie. Well, let's start with that. Uh, how I came to Grand Prairie was uh, a phone call from the prior mayor, Charles England, and uh, inviting me over to come visit, which I accepted and uh, <clears throat> really wasn't looking for a job at that point. I was happy where I was. But the bottom line, I came over and met with uh, the mayor and Jim Swafford and Jim Bledsoe. And, uh, had breakfast with them one morning and we just talked about Grand Prairie and what they had in their minds as a vision for what they wanted and I, I was impressed. So here I am. You evidently said yes. I did. I'm <laughs> glad I did. Yes, and we're glad you did too because so many things have been accomplished during your term. Could you tell us some of the things that you're the most proud of? Oh my gosh, most proud of. Well, first of all, let me qualify something. It was a great time to come to Grand Prairie. I think the city going out and passing an election to put Lone Star Park here, kind of, you know the old story, the little train that could? Yes. I think it really showed the city they could do things. And I think the leadership of the city was ready to, I, I've always said, take it up a notch. like. Emerald Lagasse always says, take it up a notch. And that's what they were ready for. And I think that racetrack coming in, I think it showed them, hey, we could do big stuff in Grand Prairie. So the timing and the setting was right. So what I'm most proud of, real simple. Uh, we had a partnership here with the city council and our executive team and staff that let us get some things done. What I'm most proud of is everything we did, we created based on a, what I'll call a foundation. The foundation was values. We brought our employees together. We said, what's important? I mean, we, we were collaborative and came up with, uh, I remember a whole chalkboard of, uh, of, of values that everybody said is important and they were. What we finally did was we said, you know, they really all fit into three categories and that was uh, in, in no priority. Service, integrity, and people. Those are the three things we value. And we started building everything we did on that. We made our decisions based on that. We hired our staff based on that. We taught it. We printed it on everything. We preached it. We recognized it. We rewarded it to our employees. So I, I, I'm probably most proud of that. And I've said many times 
to employ groups over the years. When I leave, yeah, I'll be proud of some of the buildings we built and things of that nature. But if people remember and talk about and still follow our values, that will be the most important to me. Okay. Yes. Very so good. I'll start with that. That's a great start. And uh, Mr. Hart, I know a lot of people have noticed about you that one of your greatest talents is getting the right people on the bus, as you say, and then getting them in the right seats. And I think that has been so beneficial to the city in so many ways. Mayor, can you add to that in any way? Well, I think that's one of his best things, getting the right people on the bus, the wrong people off the bus, and then when you get the right people on the bus, get them in the right seats. But let's go back to that decision. Those of us that have grown up here know we were at a crossroads. They could have chosen another city manager that didn't have the futuristic Vision. views that Mr. Hart had, but thank goodness for Mayor England, Jim Swafford, Jim Ruthie Bledsoe, Jackson. Jim Bledsoe, <laughs> Ruthie Jackson, and that whole council, they were ready to get us in going in a different direction. Leadership matters, Georgia. Leadership matters. That decision back then is why we are here today. Now, I would like to point out two things that I think are at the top of the list that Tom has done. One, our own emergency medical. Yes. Uh, that was something the council gave, charged him with doing, and that happened. Uh, we are a gold standard city. It, we're great, the fire EMS protection. But then something else, his negotiating skills to get over 5,000 acres under our parks department with the negotiations with the core, Lynn Creek Park, Lloyd Park, it's been a huge impact to us. There's many, many others, but those stand out to me. But again, it was the leadership and the direction. Leadership matters. The council gave him a charge. Let's take it a different direction. We all hear the stories why we missed out on this, missed out on that. It was because the leadership wasn't ready to take it on back at that time. I'm not going to throw dirt on them because we are no. in a good place right now. They were decisions made in the past, but I'm thankful for that council that your mother was part of that had the foresight to get somebody a visionary like Tom Hart. Yes, and I'm glad you said visionary because it does take vision to do uh, accomplish the things that you have accomplished. I remember eight years ago, um, when I first came on the council, uh, I remember telling the people, Grand Prairie is at a point where we're on the tarmac. We're the airplane on the tarmac just revving our engines. Mm -hmm. But from that time on has been the liftoff and I know many of the decisions that you have made. And the two of you are a dynamic duo. Together, you have accomplished so many things. Uh, keep telling me some of the more, th uh, some more things that we can discuss that have happened over the years. <clears throat> well, you asked me what I'm most proud of. Uh, yes. You, you, thank you for the compliment on the staff because that means a lot to me. Another thing I've said multiple times is Every year when I went into the council and we did a review, the best compliment I ever got that I took to heart was that the council liked, respected our staff. Yes. That, yeah. that, that meant more to me than anything. I, the council, and it, let me qualify that. You can be the most visionary person in the world. But if I hadn't had a council that had the vision and a council that had the courage, because we've done things other cities have not done. And not any council would have done that. So the council always supported me on putting together the best team we could get. And I had the opportunity for 22 years here to work with some of the finest mm -hmm municipal executives in the United States. So you know what, as a manager, as a leader, 
You don't have to be real smart when you get that quality and level of people in here to back you up. But again, Georgia, I mentioned, we worked as a team. I mean, the council set the policy, but the council supported us and we supported the council. And you know, I can say this unequivocally. You know, when I say the council respected the staff, this staff absolutely respected the mayor and council. They did, and that's what made it successful. We weren't doing like a lot of cities, always infighting and having right. all these issues right. on. I'm not saying we agreed. No. I don't even think it's healthy if you always agree, but I don't think it's healthy if when you disagree, you do it in What's a negative word? manner and that takes yeah. away from We everything. haven't had drama with it. No drama. Thank goodness. Yes. Oh, that's such a blessing. That's <laughs> what has been the main ingredient to make us a successful city. So, so yeah, you asked me, I, you know, uh, the EMS system, I, I will always think that's one of the most important things we did. Um, I think the uh, changes uh, uh, as a result of the leadership uh, in police making us one of the safer cities. Right. I think that will always be something. The Lake Parks, yes. We, we created three TIFs literally five hours before the law <laughs> expired. <laughs> expired. Yeah. Those TIFs have brought in millions of dollars that have let us do some of this development. And Marty Weeder is one of those people you brought in that has helped oh, with no that. No question. Uh, the TIFs have been the tool that have helped us uh, I'm proud of our economic development. We yes. have landed and negotiated some great deals. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. Um, guys, we're one of the only cities in the country that's a two-time gold medal winner with our Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. And I was so proud at that breakfast 22 years ago when I asked them, tell me what your priorities were. And that was one of the three they mm -hmm. mentioned which told me they cared about quality of life in this city. Our library system, I mean, it goes on. We, there's a lot of things to be proud of, but the bottom line, we are a great city now. We're on the map. People are looking to us as right. the leaders in areas. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, to the point that it, it became where it wasn't a job. This is home now for me. Susan and I are here. You know, we, we've built us a smaller home. It'll be our forever home, and uh, Grand Prairie's where we want to be, so I'm proud of it. Well, we're glad you have made it your forever home because we love you and your family, and your Susan kind. is excellent working with Lifeline and uh, all the other things that she's involved in, so we appreciate you all so much. Now, you mentioned public safety, which is very important to uh -huh. our citizens, quality of life which is very important. Now, economic development, what has happened over these years? Of course, if you don't have those other two, nobody <laughs> really cares if you have restaurants or hotels. I, I, I'm gonna let, I, I wanna say one thing and then I'll let the mayor take that. Because those early years, something that we had to do, we had to put the infrastructure in place. Mm -hmm. Roads, utilities, so forth, that set it up or we wouldn't have landed some of this stuff. Right. So, Mayor, take it away. You've been in, right on the front line of this economic development. Well, it was a team effort. Right when I first was elected mayor, we had to decide what we were gonna do with the uh, George Bush corridor. It had just opened right before I took office. And uh, fortunately for councils in the past, they had stepped up and bought the 170 acres of Central Park right there on Highway 161, the George Bush Turnpike. Epic Central now. It, Epic Central now. That was a huge visionary purchase. Councilmember Frigo was the one that really prodded the council at that time along to get it done. So Tom and I and the staff had to get together. What was, it, it, it took a boost. It took something to get it going. and. That's when we realized we needed to come up with that first economic development package to go to the voters to build out the epic, epic waters, playground adventures with the futuristic visionary look of the hotels, conference center centers, 
conference center and, and restaurants. So it was part of the puzzle that Tom and I and the staff worked out Early on, right after I was elected, we came up with that plan and kicked it off at my first state of the city in 2014. It took it took teamwork to come up with that plan. No question. And uh, that's one of the things that Tom and I have enjoyed uh, is our ability to be able to work together, see the same vision, tweak it a little bit between the two of us. But um, I've really enjoyed that. I know I'll have the same relationship with Steve, but Tom and I have enjoyed a relationship, a, a business and personal relationship that allowed things to, I feel like, really help the city develop. And that's what we're seeing now. Getting IKEA, building the hotels, just look at what we're getting, chicken and pickle. Who would have thought we would have gotten a chicken and pickle? We're looking, we're getting other things in the future that you and I have discussed. Maybe we'll get them. Maybe we want. I think we'll get some of them. Yes. It's exciting things. It's an exciting time to be part of the city of Grand Prairie. It is. Go out ahead. I, I just want to jump in on that because I agree. I, I can't tell you how many meetings we were in where when we got through, we looked at each other and we hadn't scripted. <laughs> But I mean, it was like we worked as a, uh, you know, pretty a fine oil machine there and, you know, backing each other up and that, that made a difference. And, and yes, I do think you will have that same relationship and you will have that same teamwork with, with Steve Dye. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got to say, I'm proud of that. Uh, Steve Dye is, uh, has taken my place and, uh, uh, which seems a little funny still to say, <laughs> uh, and I'm still wanting to check my emails. Um, hey, we turn, we should have turned them off. It's they a are. It's a habit. <laughs> they it is are. a habit. Uh, and, and the funny part, he was always, "You ever look at your email?" <laughs> I really did. Yeah. And today I'm going, "Well, I need to be looking." At this. But something. anyway, Steve Dye uh, came in uh, about 12 years ago. I brought him in after a national search to take over the police department. And um, let me say that was the right decision. Uh, our police department went through a metamorphosis that uh, has turned into, we're, like I said, we're one of the safest cities. People come to us for training. They look to us as a leader. Uh, our crime rates are just unbelievably down. Now, if you have a crime, you still go wait. I mean, <laughs> right? But the down my house. <laughs> yeah. So he was such a good leader. I early on, in fact, mentioned to him. I said, "Have you ever thought about city right. management?" He said, "No, I'm a, you know, I'm a cops cop. Always will be." Uh, but he went home, got to thinking about it, and I think he talked to Mimi, and Mimi said, "You know, there is going to be a point." So he came back in a while later after that and said, you know, let's talk. So we started a training program right then. I sent him to certain programs mm -hmm. and you could not have a more ready city manager, not only to pick it up where I'm leaving it off, but he's going to take it to a new level. And I'm proud of that. Like I said, this is my home. Yes. So. And we're all very proud of that as well. And you do have a gift of uh, getting the right person in the right place. Thank you. And uh, we're trusting uh, that as well as we see Steve take over. And um, Mayor. I'd like to add on to that. Yes. The, the right people in the right places. I, I think I'll miss somebody, sorry, but for visibility and what the city sees, he made three key hires, extremely critical hires. Rick Harold, Steve Dye, and Robert Fight. Rick was an easy decision for him. He's raised Rick. Right. He knew Rick. He trusted Rick. He knew what Rick could do. Rick did it. The other two, not so easy. It would have been simpler to stay in the rank and file and promote somebody. But to go out and get somebody like a Steve Dye to run your police department. And then because of the hire for Steve Dye, he knew what type of fire chief he had to get. 
and he was able to do that. So in my opinion, those three hires, Rick Harold, Steve Dye, and then Robert Fight, were three of the biggest hires he's ever made. Now, we can look at other positions that need to be filled that people we work with that are critical, CFOs and things like that, but yes. the, the general public doesn't see the work they do. Right. They see the work that Rick, Steve, and Fike did. And those were just critical decisions, solely up to him. And so I, I applaud him for those because they, again, made us what we are today. We would not have won the gold medal twice without Rick Harold at the helm. Right. I believe that in all my heart. We wouldn't have the crime rate reductions we have had he not picked Steve Dye. And to bring on someone like Chief Fight, our firefighters were wanting someone like Robert. He knew that, sensed it, found the right person, critical hires. That's excellent. And, you know, having those right people in the right places, as the mayor has said, has taken, and as you say, has uh, taken it up a notch, or two, or three, or three, because they were outstanding. And of course, now we have Dwayne Strong, who followed in uh, Rick's footsteps over the parks and doing an excellent job as well. So you also, with your succession plans, have us in a very comfortable spot Absolutely. right now. Absolutely, yeah, I, Dwayne's doing a great job. And as Chief Cessna is, again, yes. another one. Yes. Tom needed to go out when he went out and hired, made those three. Now, their successors, I don't know when Chief Fight's gonna leave or whether we'll be able to hire from within, but I know the police chief that we hired from within has done great, and I agree with him, Dwayne has done great. I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful that we have someone internally that will be able to take over for Chief Fight someday in the future. I'm certainly not ready for Fight to go anywhere. I love the man, he's doing an excellent job, but uh, again, <laughs> these things don't run automatic. It takes leadership, someone who knows what they're doing, making critical decisions. Uh, and I'm so proud that Tom came here because uh, I love this city. You love this city. Yes. I'm so proud of what he's done for my city. Absolutely, absolutely. We love it. It is our hometown, and that's where we're going to stay, Lord that's right. willing. That's right. The creek don't rise. So. I bet I'm going to stay here even if the creek rises. <laughs> yes, yes, because you'll. Uh, we have good EMS and. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Public safety to take care of us and emergency management as well. Is there anything else you would like to share before we close out the show? Well, I'd like a closing comment of myself, then maybe Tom can wrap it up. Uh, I was fortunate to work with Mr. Hanks for 40 years and yes. had built a very partnership, communicative, respect, relationship, friend, but work. And so I kind of knew what I wanted and needed as mayor. I needed that similar relationship. And I was able to form that with Tom really quickly. I have to be able to trust that individual. Tom and I had a level of trust that people don't understand. We don't keep secrets. Uh, we were able to share with each other, have open discussions about each other that never left the room. Sometimes delicate, sometimes not, sometimes personal. And so that's something that you can't script, you can't, it just either, either it happens or it doesn't. And we were able to do that. And I guarantee you, I'm a better mayor because of Tom Hart. That's excellent, Mayor. I'm glad you mentioned that. Your history with Mr. Hanks and you had a fabulous uh, family, mother and daddy and family uh, in your history as yes. 
a Baptist minister, that's right. and your mother was a stand-up comedian. That's right. That's Rebecca you got, says she, I got a do dose of both of that's them. That's right. And I'm glad you mentioned Rebecca, too, because she's made your job Oh, I a couldn't do dream. it without her. Yes. Couldn't do it, as he couldn't do it without Susan. Yes. We both have strong support systems that think we're the best for the job. And that's why Rebecca told somebody the other day, they said, why are you, thank you for sharing. And Rebecca told him he's the best one for the job. I want, I want to share him. There so, you go. And Susan feels the same way about Tom. Yes, yes. Tom Hart, anything else you'd like to say? As parting words or uh, words of wisdom here for <laughs> us? Well, <clears throat> during that 22 years, I only had two mayors. And the one thing I have actually taught is that when you can have a strong mayor and a strong city manager and they work as, a, as partners, you can get a lot done in the yeah. city. So I'd like to say thank you, first of all, to Charlie. Charlie uh, and I worked very well together. We're good friends. And then Ron came in and, you know, Ron, um, I, I can't tell you uh, I can't tell you in enough words what our relationship has meant mm -hmm. because I'm a relationship person. The people that I respect, I tend to get to be friends with. And I have had the utmost respect for you as a person, as a man, your values, uh, your leadership. Uh, you were a, you also run a major corporation. And you know you've you've heard the old saying it's lonely at the top. Mm -hmm. Well, you know I was very lucky because I had somebody I could sit down in confidence and just run some things right. by, get it a second opinion, and you don't know how much that helped me at times. So I just want to say thank you. Um, I, I guess in closing, it is um, it, to uh, had the opportunity to work for 22 years for councils that I liked, personally liked and respected because they were good. Man, that is not heard of. And I was very lucky. So if any of those past council or existing council, uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, and then to get to work with people that became, some of them more than just family. I mean, more than just friends. They're like family, you know. Uh, but they were so good. You, I mean, I just respected them and liked them. But what a joy to get to work mm -hmm. with people you like. Yes. And we did have a good team. The family, I mean, my family came here. You know, there is a sad part of the story where we lost a son. Yes. Um, and that will always be a sad memory from Grand Prairie. But, you know, I've got another son that has grown up and... His mother asked him a question the other day, and I, I liked his answer. And basically, it was had to do if if we were gone, would you still want to be right here? And his answer was yes. So he's he has grown up and become a great man with two children, mm -hmm. good values. Now he works for the school district. Uh, you know, I don't even think he liked school back then. So I'm so proud of him and my grandkids and Susan. Like you said, Georgia, um, uh, you got her involved, I think, in uh, Lifeline. And by the time you guys do your annual luncheon thing, yes. she drives <laughs> me crazy with Lifeline. Oh, yes. But I'm proud of what y'all have done. And I, I've given speeches here where I've talked about the fabric of the city. And it's not, you know, it's not just the city. We have a great school district now that I'm proud my granddaughter goes, attends. Yes. Uh, we've got service organizations and charitable organizations like Lifeline, United Charities, Rotary, Lions. The, that's the fabric. We've got churches here and ministers that just, you know, they become part of the community mm -hmm. also. So we got the whole package. It's been a... Uh, it's been a joy to get to work for Grand Prairie for 22 years. It's been more than a job. Like I said, it's my home. So let me close by just saying to the citizens, thank you. You guys have been supportive. Uh, uh, we passed 
every initiative in 22 years that we went to the voters with except for one. And we didn't run that one. That was that racetrack, mm -hmm. you remember yeah. back. And every other issue that we asked the voters to support her. So the folks out there, you know, <laughs> if it hadn't been for you, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't have all this stuff. So thank you for your support. Mayor, council, thank y'all. Let's do another, let's do this in 22 years again. Well, we know you're not just gonna sit back and drink coffee, Tom Hart. You have some plans that you're not sharing yet, but you do have plans, don't you? I do. I, you know, I am, uh, you know, since I'm only 39. Uh, <laughs> and holding. Yeah. No, I'm not, uh, you know, retirement to me is uh, uh, leaving something I've loved, but I'm not the, I'm not, I'm not going to go play golf and sit in the rocking chair. Yes. I, yes, I, I hope to be starting a business here in Grand Prairie. And it's, uh, so I, I'll probably be working till they take me out. Not because I have to necessarily, because I want to. Yes. And creating and, uh, you know, something special is important to me. So thank you. Of course. And we could uh, thank you. We could continue all day uh, talking about all of your accomplishments and your uh, dreams and goals and your vision, but we have to close today. I even, uh, even though we might not want to, we're going to close today and uh, say thank you for the past, your investment in the city, your love for our city, and looking forward to the future uh, with you in our city as well. Right, thank Mayor? You. You're right, Georgia. And with that in mind, since he said he going to open up a business, do something in here. Maybe in a few years we'll have him back on here and explain it to us. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have something to look forward to, as we do, because the best is yet to yeah, come yeah. here in Grand Prairie, Texas. Here, here. Thank you so much, both of you, for being here. It's an honor to be able to share this time with you and our viewers. And thank you all for joining us today. I'm reminding you that I'm Georgia Clemson and it's happening in Grand Prairie.